I'm just as fucking surprised as the rest of you that I've actually done a hundred of these now. Um, like I teased in my last review, this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, it's not going to be a straight up review. Um, it's going to be a beer that 99% of you should know and that 1% has probably been in a coma so I don't know why you're watching YouTube videos but hey I'm not gonna judge how you spend your time uh, everybody has a at least I would assume everybody has a cheap beer that they go to kind of as a standby um, craft beer can get expensive you look at um, certain six packs you know 15 16 17 dollars Sometimes you have a four pack that costs that much and sometimes you are just not willing to spend that amount of money on beer or you, or you can't. Um, I know once uh, we moved to Florida in September, my finances are going to be a lot more limited uh, and I may have to resort to um, things like the, um, the Trader Joe's brand of beer, which is very inexpensive but actually pretty drinkable. Um, there is there's a Walgreens brand that my wife's grandmother swears by, but uh, frankly, the thought of that terrifies me. Uh, and then, of course, you have your other you know cheap beers, as it were, you know, your Bud Lights, your Coors, stuff like that. My beer of choice, and don't fucking call me a hipster. It's PBR from the Pabst Brewing Company. Um, the blue ribbon on this, I always wondered exactly what the um, the origin of the blue ribbon was and it was basically that the brewers they tied a, a blue ribbon around the neck of the bottle uh, was it between I think it was like 1882 and 1913 or something like that it, it, it's somewhere in that uh, somewhere in that range in more modern years this has become the oh hipster beer now first of all I'm clearly not a hipster um, I look shitty in skinny jeans. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've ever tried on a pair of skinny jeans. I'm just making the assumption that I would look like a douchebag. Um, my beard does not grow in enough. Uh, I don't have glasses. Um, I don't listen to music like uh, Mumford & Sons or that some other band you haven't heard of. Mumford & Sons is too mainstream, I guess. Um, yeah, so I'm not a hipster. I actually, I, I like the taste of this in terms of it being a cheap beer and for price you can't really beat this um i got a six pack of this for five bucks i know a six pack of bud light for instance you're still looking at six seven maybe eight dollars depending on your market um and i mean you compare um okay when they you know sell this in a 12 pack you are paying about ten dollars and you look at a 12 pack of something, say like Founders All Day IPA. Twice the price, 20 bucks. Now is Founders All Day IPA delicious? Yes. Is it better than PBR? Yes. But sometimes you gotta go cheap. And this one works for me. Um, and once you get up into the higher numbers with the cases, you get the, like the 18 pack, the 30 pack, the prices get even more and more reasonable per beer. So why the fuck not? This I, I like better than Bud Light, Coors, Heineken, all those other, you know, standard, you know, big beers. Um, this one always works for me. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here, I don't know if you can hear that uh, loud vehicle going by outside. Sorry about that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do here is something that I have only done once before, and it was actually in preparation for this video. Um, I did not go away to college. Thus, I did not have the dorm life. I did not have the keg stand, shotgunning beers, and all that other shit in my youth. Um, I witnessed some keg stands a few times at parties when I was younger, but beyond that, I never had that going away to college experience of blackout drinking. So, for that reason, I had never shotgunned a beer before. Now, mind you, I said I've done it once before, and it was in preparation for this, mainly because I wanted to make sure that A, I could do it and B that when I did it I would not spew beer all over the rug in this room because this is not my house this is not my rug I don't want to fuck this stuff up I actually because I wanted to do this the right way I actually got a shotgunning tool it has a 
bottle opener on it, has a can opener on it, and then it has a point to perforate the can for the shotgunning. Um, I erroneously thought I was just ordering one of these and apparently ordered a dozen of them. Uh, so if anybody happens to want a shotgunning tool, uh, hit me up on Twitter and uh, <laughs> I'll see if I can arrange to get one or two to you. So, okay, let's, let's, let's do this. Now, people can critique me all they want. I'm doing this the way I, I think that I'm supposed to be doing it. Um, holding it kind of an angle. So you want like a pocket of air up there. And see, this tool actually works really nicely. I'm probably going to spew maybe a little bit of beer, but the rug has seen a little bit of beer before. Come on. There we go. That nice pop. A little bit coming out there. And then the goal is to get my mouth over this hole, open up the beer, and then just let it go down my throat. So let me move into profile here. And I apologize if my, uh, my mic gets a little... I don't know, picks up weird sounds during this, but we'll see what happens. I've, I've not done this on camera and with a mic before, so. Ah, a little bit of drippage. I can deal with that. Ooh, ah. You know what? And there's still actually a little bit left in the bottom down here. I probably should. I, I don't know if I poked the hole. Ooh, Jesus. I don't know if I poked the hole quite enough. So let's uh, finish off this a little bit here. Mm. Ah. Okay. So. Jesus Christ. Ah. I think it's I think it's the fizziness <laughs> of the beer that does it for me. But see not not too much uh, not too much spillage, a little bit. A little bit in my beard, a little bit down my shirt, but I don't think I got a single drop on the floor, so I did pretty good with that. Now, that's not the whole thing right here. That's not the whole review. Sometimes you can spruce up your PBR a little bit. Um one thought, Jesus, <laughs> one thing they don't tell you about shotgunning beer, <laughs> with all the air coming through, whew, you are you are going to be uh, belching for a while. Um, you could spruce, I mean, I suppose you could, you know, run PBR through a Randall or something like that, but that's almost a little bit too fancy. What I have here is something that I actually bought a while back. And um, I, I, I talked about it on the podcast back when I was doing that, but it's something called Brew Salt. Now, um, I believe they are based at brewsalt.com. If you look up Brew Salt on Twitter, you'll find their account. They're really cool people to talk to. Um, and basically, it is a flavored salt. This particular one is uh, the habanero. The ingredients in it, gray um, Celtic sea salt and habanero peppers. It's very simple. And this is one of the four flavors. I got a sampler pack, so I don't have to have a huge thing of it. Um, there is chocolate, bacon, of course, and lime. I find that lime goes, it's probably the most versatile. And this is the kind of stuff you can use with, you can use with food too. Um, I think I added, I added the, the bacon uh, salt to a salad once and it worked pretty well. The one difficulty I find with the brew salt, and I know um, I, I talked with the, the brew salt people about this on Twitter, is um, finding the correct method to really get it to dissolve into the drink. Um, more often than not, I still end up with a little bit of solid salt at the end of it, but the flavor still permeates through the beer. And it works nicely. So what I'm going to do here, let me slide these over a little bit and uh, see if I can get this flight a little bit of room, spread it out into four. Um, headphones here so you can kind of see what the hell I'm doing okay so let me see if I can properly try and split this up into four 
little glasses. See, any other YouTuber would probably have, you know, set this up in advance or would do editing to, you know, not show the pour and would just have the beer magically appear there. But fuck that. I don't, I don't want to have to do more editing than is necessary. I, I do editing as a side gig of actual, like, paying work. I don't want to have to do more of it. Um, so, you know, I, I think for this, this purpose, that's enough. It's not quite even, but fuck, it doesn't need to be. So, we have the four here. Let's, um, you don't have to use a lot. You don't have to use a lot. And I'm going to go um, in order of probably the least overpowering of the taste buds to the most. So I'll start with the lime. I'll finish with the habanero. And um, see if I can point this to the camera here so you can see a little bit. Um, this one, you know, gray Celtic sea salt, fresh limes. And you can you can smell that, that great smell. You don't really need a lot. Um, honestly, I mean, you can just kind of shake out a little bit from there you can you can swish it let it sit you can do whatever you want um, experiment to permeate through the drink but it definitely has an effect um, second one let's do bacon and like I said this one um, this one is probably one of the most versatile just in terms of using it not necessarily in beer but in other things um, you can almost you can make yourself a poor man's rock beer in a weird way with with the bacon okay uh third one chocolate chocolate is an interesting one i've added it to i've added it to um various porters and stuff to see if i can like accentuate the chocolate a little bit more in it and the difference with this chocolate one is that this tends to um this tends to dissolve a little bit better this one is um celtic sea salt Unsweetened natural cocoa powder and monk fruit extract. So a little bit, a little bit more going on in there. And then the last one, the habanero. Uh, I I love habanero. I love spicy beers. I love spicy food. Uh, in fact, uh, Flying Dog has a mango habanero IPA that uh, when I go out today, I am going to be on the lookout for. Okay, so go back to the first one here. This was the lime. If you look at the bottom there, you can see. The salt kind of still sitting in there. So you know what? Let me give it a little bit of a swirl. It's also sitting on the head there too. Try and get it to mix up a little bit more. And of course, you don't have to just do this with PBR. You can do this with any cheap beer. Or you can do it with any other beer. Say you have, um, I don't know, let's think here. Say, say you have um, a Sculpin IPA from Ballast Point. You want to try the lime in it. Um, you want to try the habanero in it. You know, maybe you couldn't find the habanero sculpin. It, it's a thought. So we got the lime here. You can smell it a little bit. But it definitely adds a citrusiness to it. Also adds a saltiness to it. So you're almost um, getting that weird element of a goza too. Of course, that last, <laughs> that last sip, you really get the salt at the end. So it's kind of interesting like that. And we got the bacon. Let's mix this up a little bit. You can smell the smokiness from it. And it definitely adds a smoky element to it. It's not quite as strong as a rock beer, but it does give something different to the PBR. And you can see you get, you know, leftover remnants, but just kind of the nature of salt. You can see this one, it really likes to sit on top. So this one, you're probably really going to want to mix up. This one I found is tough because it just seems to be a little bit lighter. It dissolves better, but it's it's lighter. So you got to kind of get it in there. And in fact, um, let me get a drink mixer up here. Little hockey stick, of course. Okay. So you can see that kind of suspended in there. Smell the sweetness. Now I have to admit, I'm getting more of the salty than the sweet off of this. It may be the other two that I just previously had that are still kind of lingering in there. On that last hit though, I, I did get a little bit more chocolate, so that's better. Now keep in mind too, these aren't full 
uh, full beers either. You add some of that into a full 12 ounce beer, you're gonna get a, a bit of a different effect and you gotta play around with it. See how much salt you actually want in there. Um, you don't, you, know, you wanna try not to get it too salty, but you still want that flavor to permeate. I, why, the, why the fuck do I keep using that word permeate? Permeate, permeate, permeate. You want the, the flavor to flow through the beer. Now that sounded worse. We got the, uh, the habanero, I almost said mango habanero, I'm thinking ahead. Now that is a definite slight kick. It's not quite the kick that you might expect from a pure habanero beer, but it does add that bit of spice to it. And honestly, I, I know I said the lime is probably the most versatile of the of the three, or four, yeah, forget how to count now. But I think the habanero is my favorite for what it does to the beer. Because you, you mix it right with a full beer and you get that you get that spice right at the back of the throat. It's very, very nice. Ah. So got that. A way to spruce up your PBR. But you know what PBR by itself? It's not a bad beer. It's decent for shotgunning. It's good to just crack open a can. Or if you are more of a bottle kind of person, uh, where the fuck did I put those? Let me see here. Oop, getting caught on my mic already. Ugh. You know what? I'm not gonna be able to grab that because I'm practically tied down to my chair, but fuck it. Um, if you get PBR bottles, this was something I discovered when I first started drinking PBR. Underneath the bottle caps, there are um, numbers and suits, like playing cards. And apparently you can make an entire deck out of the, um, out of the caps. You just collect over time. And I, I, have, I don't have a whole deck, but I have a bunch of the caps just kind of sitting in a glass back there somewhere. <laughs> Whew. Um, but um, it's you know another fun thing to collect. I I, I kind of stopped with the caps and I've been sticking with the cans now. But like I said, it, it's a cheap beer, but it's not bad cheap. Um, there there are, you know I mean I'll I'll take this over Bud Light. I'll take this over Coors. Um, in fact, this shirt when I when I went to go see uh, Dance Gavin Dance on their recent tenth anniversary tour, the venue I was at, um, you know they they had Bud Light. They had Heineken. I think um, they had Stella, but they also had PBR, and it was reasonably affordable considering you know concert menu. I got that. And I was happy with it. I, I think I had one or two at the show, and I was pleased. Um, you know, I don't I don't need to go to a show like I, I went to a show one time in Central Park that um, I think they had like Blue Point and so, something else. I know they had Blue Point's uh, toasted ale. And it was like eight or nine bucks for not even a 12 ounce cup. So I'll, I'll take this and I'll enjoy it. So got a little bit left in here too. Mm. Um, 5% ABV. So it's not, not too heavy on that either. I think that calculates out to about 153 calories. If you are watching your, uh, watching your diet like I do. And then you uh, run to drink beer, and you drink beer and have to run the next day. And so, PBR, Paps Brewing Company. Um, 100th review, yay. Um, next review, I'll be back to some normal stuff. In fact, the next review uh, is going to be a beer that was gifted to me by a friend. I, I, I drank all of Nicole's beers. So this one is a different friend, a local friend that told me about this beer and I started drooling over it. So a uh, little tease for the next review. But with that, enjoy and I will see you guys for the next one.